All right, I've been playing guitar for like 14 years. I, like many, have bought a lot of pedals. And it's taken a while to land on the ones that I've liked. I've maybe gone through like 30, 40 pedals over my time. But the pedal board has always been kind of the big puzzle for me. I wanted to like maximize my sound and get as many useful pedals on the pedal board as possible. While also trying to fit as many pedals on the pedal board as possible. You know, at one point though, I actually realized that there were a lot of pedals on my pedal board that I just didn't really use. There were pedals like uh, the Electro Harmonics Pog 2, uh, Qtrons, certain fuzzes like the Fuzz Factory by Zvex, even though that's a really cool pedal. I realized I should gravitate towards trying to nail simple guitar tones, you know, stuff like Marshall emulators, uh, a really good fuzz a really good lead sound with a variable amount of delay. I guess I wanted to get rid of a lot of the superfluous stuff that I wouldn't need at like every performance or every show or even in my practicing. And it actually got me to take my wah off my pedal board. I've got an exotic wah that's killer. You know, a lot of these pedals though, they're just things that you can have off to the side. But if I was gonna have a rock solid pedal board, I don't wanna necessarily be changing things all the time. Just a super versatile and flexible tone platform. Nothing distracting either, just like ultra reliable. Hey, and by the way, my name's Daniel McLaughlin. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Uh, please hit the like button. And let's talk about my pedal board. All right, cool, so check it out. Here's the pedal board. The whole thing's controlled with this Voodoo Labs PX8 Plus. This is a pedal looper. All of the drive pedals, as well as the compressor and the Eventide have individual loops. The Leal is actually running through the send and return of the switcher, meaning that it's always on, it's always affecting the signal. Now, luckily, it's a high-quality volume pedal, so it's not doing too much to the signal. The Big Sky, the Timeline, and the Eventide are all controlled via MIDI as well from the switcher, and everything runs through the Big Sky and the Timeline at the end of the chain. If I ever want to turn those off, I can program a preset into each of them with the mix knob programmed all the way down to zero, meaning that we get no affected signal. That's the benefit of a Strymon pedal, is that the affected part of the signal actually goes on top of a true bypass signal, or buffered if you choose to do it in the settings. You don't have your original signal compromised by converting it to digital, as you would with an Eventide pedal. I'll demonstrate that a little bit later in the video as well. In terms of the signal chain, we're actually entering with the looper. Then uh, each of the pedals has their own individual loop. The Ego, the Klon KTR, the Greer Lightspeed, JHS Angry Charlie, Walrus Audio 3A5. The Eventide actually has two loops, right? It's a stereo pedal, and I have a loop occurring right at the beginning and right at the end. Now this is for the reason that the Eventide covers a lot of ground in terms of its effects. You know, it can be a tremolo circuit, it can be a weird synthesizer circuit, it could be a chorus pedal. So depending on whether I want it pre-gain stage or post-gain stage, I will program that into the bank on the switcher, and it just doubles the usability. I wouldn't say I ever really use the reverbs and delays on that guy because I've got the timeline and the big sky, but you never know. I've got some churchy stuff right at the end that I'll show too that could, you know, benefit from a subtle reverb in addition to a big shimmer verb. <laughs> okay, but let's get into it. So right now we're on bank number one, preset number one. That sounds like this. Okay, sounds pretty nice and chimey. I'll let you know that I am using a Fender Custom Shop Strat going into a Matchless HC30. But that is my clean sound. It's also using the Klon KTR, right? The Klon KTR is actually what I consider the centerpiece to this pedal board. Without it, here's how it sounds. Check it out. Here it is with. Here it is without. A lot of gain associated with it. A lot of gain and a lot of volume. Now that's for a very specific reason. This pedal board is built all around stacking gain stages. So when I've got a pedal that's kind of a clean treble boost like the Klon KTR, 
What it does is it can double the usability of each of my other pedals. So take for the Greer Lightspeed, for example. This is what I use for like a good rock country rhythm, maybe. Here it is with the clon. You can actually really hear it when it gets to lead tones, which is where this clon shines. I like to use each of the gain stages as a non-boosted rhythm and then a boosted lead sound. So check it out. Here's the Greer light speed without the boosted lead. Here it is with. Pretty cool. Let me demonstrate some of the others. So here's the JHS Angry Charlie. Here it is with the KTR added. Cool. Now that's a Marshall in a box style pedal. It's really cool. I really kind of think that it sounds like a JCM 800 when it's not boosted. When it's boosted, it sounds a little bit more like a super lead to me. And then we have an old favorite of the channel. We have the Walrus Audio 385. Now this is modeled after the projector amp. If you didn't check out the projector amp video, check it out right here. Pretty nice and transparent. That is without the boost. With the boost, it starts to get that kind of cool transformer break up -y sound. Nice. All right, to take it a step back, this is what the ego sounds like. This is just a simple compressor pedal. Now this has some of that gain incorporated into it as well. This is what the dry signal sounds like again. So the way that I program my banks and my presets is each of my banks over here, each of them has four presets. On my A preset, I always put my clean rhythm sound. My B preset has my uh, dirty tone. Usually it's dirty rhythm, but sometimes that can be a lighter, dirty lead. C is the effects area. So that's a nice little slap back. If you notice when I'm changing these, you can see the Strymon moving around its presets. It's because it's all MIDI controlled. And then D is always my lead. Now, in terms of my banks, uh, I have a couple of these in here that I use for very specific reasons. Say, for example, four. If I'm ever playing a musical, I'll usually program number four to be my musical bank. Kind of craft tones for whatever show I might be playing. Six and seven are for country gigs, and I play in a country band that plays a mix of kind of traditional country and then bro country, rock country, a couple old classic rock songs too. It's a little bit of a party band as well, so that's important. You know, but these all still follow that same formula of clean, dirty rhythm, effect, and then lead. Check this out. Party band, you got to have a dotted quarter delay for something like this. I hope that doesn't get copyright struck. <laughs> I think number eight is my church preset. Yeah, I think number eight is my church preset. All 
All right, so let's talk about some weird things regarding this pedal board. The one thing that I would say is the biggest problem with this thing, I'm not the biggest fan of the Eventide H9. It's not necessarily just because everything's converted to digital and I'm like a dig I'm like an analog purist. I'm not necessarily that person, but check this out. All right. I'm gonna use two patches, one of which engages this Eventide H9, right? This just has a small tremolo on it. Very light, you can barely even hear it, but check this out. Did you hear it? Did you hear the drop in signal? Now that's not necessarily a deal breaker, but all of my patches are being shifted on both of the Strymons and they don't have any kind of drop in signal. It just seems like something that Eventide could fix. The other big thing about this actually has to do with the Klon KTR. So because this is such a gain staged pedal board, it's kind of a weird way of saying it, but switching between single coils and humbuckers is a little bit difficult. Uh, a lot of the times when I jump on a humbucker guitar after playing this thing with single coils, everything will just be gained out to the extreme. It sounds way too heavy. The workaround for that is actually with the Klon KTR. What's nice about that is I can just shift the gain knob and volume a little bit on that thing and make it work. But I don't really want to have to do that. It's, it's my workaround for now, though. This Leal was probably the most recent addition. Uh, and it is such a killer volume pedal, albeit it's expensive. I think it's about 230 bucks. Listen to the sweep on this guy. Really killer sweep. Uh, that thing is reliable too. Uh, I've gone through a couple of Ernie Ball volume pedals where the string breaks. Thing is made with a magnet that will not go bad for several hundreds of years, I think. Outside of that, this is a stereo pedal board, which is pretty cool. Uh, the signal splits right at the timeline. Then we've got stereo delay, stereo reverb. Works really well as a mono unit as well. There's never really any trouble with like the signal split as you may deal with there. The whole board is wired up with Evidence Audio Monorail which is just my favorite kind of cable to wire up a pedal board with. You saw that on the John Mayer pedal board build. If you haven't seen that, check it out here. The power is two Voodoo Lab pedal power supplies. One is a Pedal Power 2 Plus. The other one is a Pedal Power Digital. One is chained to the other, so I only have one power outlet. And funny enough, I don't use an IEC cable with this thing. I actually have a three-prong plug sticking out the back of this where I extend with an extension cable and just plug it into the wall. That's because originally I was thinking about doing a power con cable, kind of a weirdo cable that you wouldn't necessarily see as much in a venue over an IEC maybe. I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of experience seeing these. I actually think they have to do with lighting a lot more than they do audio equipment. But anyway, it was kind of a pain in the butt to do. I wired one up, you had to get some crimpers going, and it ended up not really working for me. And then I kind of went back on even IECs and I said, you know what? People don't always have extra IECs lying around. You know what they do always have lying around? Extension cables. This is something that would make this more reliable. So I did that. I'm not necessarily sold on that in the long term, but we're doing it now. The cool thing, I can plug my cables into the back of this Pedal board, I installed this panel made by this company called btpa.com. They're a pretty common pedal board building supply store online. That's also where I got these quarter inch jacks. Very cool, very happy I did that. Just makes it all seem kind of very pro. But overall, this is years of building out pedal boards. This is years of collecting pedals, buying and selling pedals, buying and selling pedal boards. I've had pedal boards fail. I've had pedal boards weigh 60 pounds that were just exhausting to take anywhere. I'm really happy with this. I don't know what I would do to upgrade it any further besides maybe trying out a couple different drive pedals, which is cool that I can do that pretty easily on this thing. The pedal board is a Pedal Train Novo 24. All the pedals are locked down with dual lock. And a big thing went into choosing the pedals that are on this board right now too. 
If you notice, there aren't any small Strymon petals, even though I love my Flint, I love my Deco, I love my El Capistan, El Capitan, El Capistan, whatever. Analog Man King its own, great pedal too. Uh, but, you know, this is all going through my switching system and I don't necessarily want to be clicking on anything else other than that. I just want to plug this thing in, have everything be on, everything be set up. The Big Sky also has like a weird amp emulator at the very end of it. Uh, I've had to go direct a couple times, which is always kind of a bummer, but it really didn't sound too bad. It sounded actually pretty good. This is a strong board. Thank you. 